Hello everybody, this is Aiden Odette and... We're gonna show you how to fix an uh, Accurite weather station. So, what this basically does is this bit goes outside, this bit goes inside. And then it shows all these fancy things like temperature outside, temperature inside, uh, there's some pressure stuff, what the weather looks like, the moon phase, and some stuff I don't understand. And a couple of months ago, this thing was permanently at 67 degrees outside in the middle of summer. So we thought, oh, the batteries must be off. We replaced the batteries, didn't do anything. When Dad took it apart, he found something very interesting. Yeah, and this is a telltale sign, guys. If you see, like, the, these little dashes, and right there, there's a tiny little line that shows the wireless connection to the sensor unit that sits outside. And that, that didn't show anything either. I didn't realize that that's a little wireless sign. But it should should have the bars there if if this thing works correctly. So I knew that either this thing's wireless uh, receiver or this guy's wireless receiver or something else on this guy is, is wrong. Um, like Aiden said, we replaced all the batteries. Uh, there's even a disk coin type battery uh, CR2032 inside this guy below the battery compartment we can actually quickly show you that so if you if you pull these batteries out you'll see below it there it's a coin disc battery it's about that size uh, like three millimeters thick like quarter inch thick basically quarter Looks like a quarter. Yeah, a little smaller than that. Uh, the only purpose of that is to maintain the date and time and, and probably the settings of, of this weather station while the main batteries are out, while you replace the main batteries so you don't have to uh, reset everything if all goes well. So I'm going to just stick them back. Like um, We did find that a coin battery was dead and we replaced all the batteries but still it didn't help. So obviously this guy was functioning well except for the communication to the sensor unit. And you can actually buy these sensor units um, by themselves. But I thought let's just see what, what what's wrong. Maybe there's something simple wrong or you know if it's totally shot then we would buy a new one. Basically he was bored and wanted to fix something. Another thing that you want to look at is this little light. I didn't remember from way back when we installed this, um, but this little light flashes only once every few seconds. Uh, I didn't know if it should be always on or whatever, but uh, now I know that it should only be flashing once every few seconds and that's when this guy communicates to, to the weather station itself. Um, so I, we didn't see like in this case, I don't know if you if you watched it so far, but it, you'll see it doesn't flash at all. So let's have a look um, at how to get to the inside of this thing. So normal AA batteries, and these are actually the wrong type. Uh, I actually did download the, the manual of, of the specific one. I think Accurite.com, as it says there, Accurite.com is the site. And back here is a model number. Um, this one is model 00621. Is that correct? Yep. Right there. So, typical battery compartment. We had the wrong batteries in there, I'm sure. Uh, our batteries started leaking. So we cleaned it all up, obviously, put new batteries, still nothing. And uh, then I thought, let's look at this thing a little further. So back here, there's like four screws. Phillips head screws. So we'll quickly undo those.
Okay, so you see inside here, very simple thing and it, first thing I saw was that this thing was loose on the one end and it looked like down there on the little motherboard, right down there, almost looked like there's some solder where something could have pulled loose and I thought this was the issue. But then on closer inspection I saw this guy here. Now, if you turn it like this, you'll see there this whole wire I replaced. And you'll see this new solder down there. And I soldered this actually on the bottom of the plate. Because the plating on the top here was all corroded away, you know, from the running out of the batteries. Um, and I actually had to pull this guy out. You can pull these little plates out and solder them on the outside um, because this is obviously plastic so if it if you heat it, the plate up too much it's going to melt around here I actually had to cut out a little bit of that plastic to get this thick cable and the solder, soldering joint through there and only then did I solder down there once this was back in I just had to pull this tab up in line push that thing out and solder it on the outside and I had to replace the whole cable because at the bottom it you know the tiny little cable the wires didn't want to take any solder it didn't want to turn up so I replaced the whole thing and I might have to do this in the future as well this red one but for now it's good and with that guy in place I thought well maybe this this was meant to be like that because I couldn't see any solder on the tip of this and I didn't want to just assume it goes there and solder the wrong thing maybe this is just an antenna or something so I left this guy like this just fixed the part I saw that was obviously broken fix that and let's just see what it does now so I'm just gonna pop the batteries back in if you read the manual they say you should get lithium batteries um, if your outside temperature goes below minus four degrees centigrade I think but to read the manual to just make sure. Yeah, by us, it gets quite a bit colder than that in the winter. So you'll see this is lithium battery. And they say not to use extended life or long life batteries and all that. Definitely not the alkaline type, like this. Yeah, not the one with acid in them. I think they all have the acid in, but... It's a little tight fit. Let's show you what happens with the batteries out. As I do say you should, when you bring this up the first time, you should have both sets of batteries out. And I think you should first put the batteries in, in the sensor and then in the station or vice versa, I can't recall now. We'll see now. So I'm putting that in and look, have a look at the wireless thing. You see it still doesn't register any temperature. Let me turn this around. You can also watch this little light. It might flash once or twice while we do this. You see it's searching for the signal. I don't know if I have to pull the battery out of this guy and put it back in. We'll see now. And they say it could take like 20 minutes to sync up. So... We'll get back to you when that happens. Yeah. What I found is if you put them close together like this, they... they sync up pretty quick yeah I think I need to just do this guy just pull one of the batteries out I think it found the signal that thing's not flashing anymore it's staying, <laughs> it's staying at a solid four bars I think it is. can you see the light flashing mm -mm. This light might be very tough to see if it flashes, but you can see at some point here yeah, the, these two did sync up. That guy does see a solid wireless signal now, and it did measure the inside temperature here, yeah, 76. And you'll see this temperature. Uh, th there was just a flash there. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. I Yeah, um, but as soon as you take this outside, you'll see this temperature starts dropping or rising, whatever your temperature outside is. 
slowly adjusting to it. It's not instantaneous, but it'll happen like every once a minute or so it'll update and get to the correct temperature. So a simple little fix. It could save you a few uh, bucks uh, if you don't have to replace this. A lot of the fact that they even have these to replace means a lot of people have problems with them. They are not manufactured um, top quality. So that's one way to fix them quick. So in that video, Dad showed us how to fix an accurate weather station. If you like this video, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.